What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. Today we're gonna to be coding the E90M3 using Beamer Code. So if you guys have been around this channel for a while, you know that I do a bunch of videos on Beamer Code for the F30 that I have. However, I just picked up the E90M3 and we can also do coding using Beamer Code on that chassis as well. The Bluetooth adapter that I prefer to use for any coding is the VPeak adapter. This allows you to connect your phone to your car via OBD2 port. And then you're able to bring up Beamer Code app and start coding away. Before we jump into this video, let's hop over to the computer. I wanna show you guys a couple of things real quick on the Beamer Code website, just to clear anything up, and then we'll hop into the car and do some actual coding. All right, so as you guys know, I have done a ton of videos on Beamer Code for the F30 chassis. However, Beamer Code is also available for more than just the F-Series chassis. So if we go ahead and hop over to the Beamer Code website, you can see here that it is available for iOS and Android. It's like $26 or something like that for the full version. You have to buy the full version in order to code your car. Scrolling down, it tells you a little bit about the coding, how it's made simple, shows you some of the features that you can do. And then also it talks about the adapter that we use, the VPeak Bluetooth adapter. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description for this exact adapter to connect your car to your actual phone. In addition to that link, I'm also gonna leave a 15% off discount code. If you guys wanna buy this one, the same one that I use, you can get 15% off using that code. Just click the link, use the code, and you're good. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the Beamer Code website, you'll see check compatibility. Now the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because a lot of people were leaving comments and sending me DMs and they couldn't quite figure out which car works and which car doesn't. So with BMW, you can see there's all kinds of different series, four series, five series, one series, two series, eight series, X, all of the X's, the I's, even the I8, and then the M's. So let's just jump into mine, three series M3. And then you can also see in here, they even have the G20. So you could code your brand new G20 if you wanted to. So looking at mine, I have a 2008 to 2013 E90. I'm gonna hop in there. And look, it tells you that it is supported, supported coding options. So there's all kinds of different options on here. Now, obviously Beamer Code just puts this on the website to give you an idea of what you can probably do to your car. I think it's really, really important to note you guys that Every chassis is different, every car is different, and what you can actually code depends on your specific model of car. What I can code on my car might be different than what someone else can code on their car and vice versa. There are a lot of things that I can't code on my car that other people can, and there are some things that I can code that other people can't. So it just depends on what car you have, but regardless, there are always some things that you can code, and this is honestly just an awesome, awesome feature that we have as BMW drivers, being able to use Beamer Code the other great thing about Beamer Code is it's a one-time fee. You buy the app and you're done. You don't have to pay anymore. There are other services out there like Carly where you have to continually pay annually. I've also found that the support for Beamer Code is fantastic. Anytime I've had a question, I've just emailed them. They've gotten right back to me. It's really, really easy to use and they're extremely responsive when it comes to their support system. So that's just like a brief overview on Beamer Code, what it is, how to get into it, is your car supported? Let's head out to the car and I'm gonna show you guys some of the things that I I have coded on my E90 M3. All right, hopping in the garage. Shout out to ECS. They sent me this really cool banner for my garage. I love it. I also got some H&R springs we're gonna put on this week. But here's the E90, and so we're gonna be doing some coding on this car. This is obviously my second garage and I haven't put the lighting up in here. And as you guys know, the F30 is at the wrap shop. So let's go ahead and hop in the car and I'm gonna show you guys how to do some coding. So the first thing we wanna do when VPeak sends you your Bluetooth adapter, it's gonna come in this nice little case, which I absolutely love. And I actually just leave it in my glove compartment so I can use it whenever I have to. But you just take out the adapter and this adapter is gonna go into this OBD port right here. So all we're gonna do is pop off this cover like that, and then go ahead and place your adapter into the actual OBD port. And you can see it's lighting up. That means that we are connected and good to go. All right, you guys, so the next step is to go ahead and turn on your car. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can turn it on in accessory mode, or you can turn the entire car on with the engine running. I actually prefer to code the car 
with the engine running. That's just how I prefer to do things with this coating system. Everyone has their own preferences when it comes to coating. If you are gonna code the car just in accessory mode, it's smart to actually have a battery charger so your battery doesn't die while you're actually coating the car. That could be really bad. You could end up bricking your ECU or something. I have coated both of these cars while they're running many, many times. I've coded literally everything that I can code on my F30 while it's running and I've never had a single issue. So in my opinion, I prefer to code the car with the car running. How you wanna do it is entirely up to you. Another misconception when it comes to Beamer code and connecting our Bluetooth adapter to our phone is people think they need to add the actual VPeak adapter to our Bluetooth preferences in the phone. You do not need to do that. As soon as you plug in the VPeak adapter to your OBD2 port, you can actually just go ahead and open up your app Beamer code. So you guys are gonna see the Beamer code screen pop up right here and then I'm gonna lead you guys through some coding that I did. I'm just gonna show you what I've coded already and what I plan on coding in the future. So the next step is to go ahead and hit connect and then find your series. Obviously this is a BMW 3 Series M3 E90 from 2008. So we got that selected here. We're gonna go ahead and hit that, hit connect, give it a little bit of time to load. Right now it is reading the car's ECU, determining what your car actually is, and then bringing up the values that are available for you to code. Okay, so the first screen pops up. You have air conditioning, airbag control unit, car access system, footwell module, head unit, instrument cluster, and junction box passenger. So I'm gonna kind of run through some of these and explain some of the things that I've coded already. In the car access system settings, I did change a few things. So I converted everything to convenient opening active. You'll see that you'll have convenient opening, convenient opening with remote control, convenient closing, convenient closing with remote control. All of these different things I changed to active and I set most of the delays to as little as I could because anytime I'm using any of these features, I want them to actually activate immediately, except for the sunroof. So what that means is in 0.5 seconds after holding down the unlock button, my windows will go down, and then after 3.5 seconds, my sunroof will actually open, which is just a really cool feature that BMW has added into these cars, and now we can code it into our individual cars just how we want it. So it's the same thing with the closing delay, how fast do you want those to actually close. Doors, windows, selective central lock, locking so you can decide which doors lock and unlock at certain times, automatic lock, automatic speed thresholds. So at which speed when you're driving do your doors actually lock? I didn't really mess with that at all either. You can also change it to unlock doors automatically or automatic lock after two minutes. So you leave the car and it just locks automatically after two minutes. Comfort key eject and comfort start. So the comfort key eject is really, I thought was really interesting. So with the E90, when you're actually done driving the car, you have to hit stop and then you have to push in the key and it ejects. It, which is kind of annoying, like a two-part system that I didn't really want to deal with. Well, with the comfort eject key, you just hold the stop button and it automatically turns off the car and ejects the key, which is awesome. So I coded that immediately because I knew that that was something that I wanted to do. So if you guys are interested in how you actually code any of this stuff, you just go into the actual value that you want to change, active, not active, whatever it may be. Obviously, I already have mine as active. Then you go back and then you just hit that code in the top right. You'll see code right up there. Um, you can do multiple features at once, so I can go into car access system, as long as you don't leave that category, I can go into multiple things in this category and change a bunch of features and then go up to code and code all those things at once. What Beamer Code also does is create a backup every time you code, so you can always revert back to stock settings or your previous coding system. So you really don't lose anything in case something went wrong and you're like, oh, I don't really like this feature. You can just hit your backup and it goes back to how your car was, which is just awesome and super smart of Beamer code. So other than that, in the car access system, I didn't change anything else. Uh, I liked it exactly the way it was. Then jumping into head unit, I changed some things in the actual head unit. I'm gonna show you guys what those are. So if you look in the head unit area, we have checkbox acoustical lock confirmation. Uh, that means it'll make a noise when you lock it. And there's all of these other things that you can change. Uh, daytime running lights, checkbox, Daytime running lights is active, so you can enable and disable from the iDrive whether you want your DRLs to be running, which is something that I wanted to be able to decide from my iDrive. PDC, I don't have that. Video in motion, I don't have it. It says active, but I don't even have it. So warning at startup. The legal disclaimer that pops up, super annoying. I don't want that on. I coded that off. And then that is it. That's all that I coded in here. So these are some really, really cool things. I'm actually gonna go ahead and change the acoustical lock confirmation uh, to pop up in my iDrive. So I'm changing that to active so I can go ahead and select 
whether I want that to be on or off. Let's go ahead and hit code in the top right, start coding. And so this might take a little bit. Um, sometimes it's different with every car and everything that you're coding. It depends on what category you're in. Obviously this one's really quick, so it's just gonna go ahead and code it for me real fast. It resets the ECUs. It might throw up some errors, kind of normal when you're coding, just ignore it, they'll clear afterwards. If you do change things in your instrument cluster, you're gonna need to go ahead and reset your time, your time and date in these settings, which is really simple. If you guys don't know how to do that, I'll show you real quick how to do it. So we just coded that, we're good to go. I just coded that feature into my car. Now we're gonna move over to the instrument cluster. I'm gonna show you guys some things I did in the actual instrument cluster for coding. So there are a few things I changed in here. The digital speed inboard computer, I wanted that. So it shows the actual mile per hour that I'm driving in my instrument cluster, which I find really convenient so I don't actually have to look at the speedometer. I can just look at that little digital mile per hour and I know exactly how fast I'm going like as soon as I see a cop or something. It's also really cool because I have that feature in my radar detector so I can also see how fast I'm going up on my radar detector. This has GPS, the unit in R3s and all Awesome radar detector. Um, so there's also a bunch of warnings you can change. Speed limit warning, temperature warning, ignition key warning, reserve warning. So that's something that I changed. So it seems that my fuel reserve warning was going off at like a quarter tank, which is ridiculous. I don't need to have a quarter tank for it to tell me that it's time to get gas in this car. So I actually dropped that down to a range warning of 10 kilometers and eight liters and then coded that in. So it doesn't like go off all the time. There's gas stations everywhere around here. So I'm not worried about getting to one. So those are the couple things that I changed in here. And then once we jump into the junction box passenger, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff here. Headlight washers, all that stuff. I don't have any of that, so I don't need to worry about it. Cleaning delays. There's just so much you can do in this app. Seriously, it's it's pretty incredible. And I just opened this one for E90. I haven't gotten fully into it. You can do all sorts of things like deciding which lights are running all the time, DRLs, your side markers, your folding mirrors. It's a really, really cool app. So I highly suggest you guys check it out if you're interested in actually coding your BMW. BMW. There is expert mode. You guys are going to see when you go into some of these categories, there's expert mode. I highly recommend that you do not mess with that if you don't know what you're doing. You can severely mess up your car. So in my opinion, I stay away from that kind of stuff. I don't really need to dive into the ECU and start pulling things out. And the car is great just how it is. I just wanted to change a couple of features that kind of annoyed me. Another area we should probably talk about is the airbag control unit. So this one was kind of a big deal for me because I'm always moving cars in this parking lot and switching garages for doing videos. And every time that I get in the car and I want to move the car, it tells me I have to put on my seatbelt and you get that annoying chime over and over again. That was something that I wanted to code out, not so I could drive without my seatbelt on when I'm on the road, you guys, but just for when I'm in the parking lot and I want to move the car. I didn't want to have this thing yelling at me because my seatbelt wasn't on. So. In airbag control unit, you can go ahead and set the seatbelt reminder, driver's seat and passenger seat, initial seatbelt reminder after start. I turned them all off. I don't want my car telling me that my seatbelt is off. I know that my seatbelt is off. With that being said, you guys, don't be dumb. Don't drive around without your seatbelts on. That's just stupid. I don't think I really need to tell you why that's stupid, but I do feel like I just need to say that because I am showing you guys how to code that actual reminder off. So I did turn that off just so I could kind of move things around in my parking lot without it annoying me. So this last one is a little bit different and here is why. The footwell module. So in the footwell module, and I've done some research on this, this is where you can find the mirrors folding and some of the like side markers to turn off, stuff like that. In some of the E90s in different years, the car had an error in the actual ECU when it was loaded from BMW. My car was affected by it. From what I understand from reading on the forums, you can take your car into BMW and they will fix this for you. They just have to reboot the ECU or put a new one in. I'm not really sure how they do it. Maybe reprogram it. Um, it could be as simple as a software update. I really don't know. But what this means is I can't get into my footwell module in order to code anything. You're gonna see this error here. Coding is not possible because critical error has been detected that may lead to control unit not being able to restart after coding. As soon as I saw that, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that. Like. Folding the mirrors is not that big of a deal to me. Would be cool to do it, but um, if anything, I'll just take the car to BMW. The car's completely stock. I'm not worried about taking it to BMW. And I would just tell them, hey, look, I found online that there's an issue with some of these ECUs. I want mine to get fixed. It's an extended warranty, so it should be free of charge. They should just take care of it for you. What happens if you do go beyond this point? Because in some apps like Carly, I've heard that you can actually get past this point, even if this error pops up, which is really dumb. You can actually break the ECU and ruin it and then you are absolutely screwed. So 
do not do that. Do not mess with this part. If it says that there's an error, don't mess with it. It's just the smartest way to go about it. So down the line, I might actually go in and get that fixed if I want to. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I'm totally cool with the way the car is now. I love it. Um, the mirrors folding in isn't really worth a trip to BMW for me. With that being said, I didn't mess with anything in the footwell module. However, you guys might be able to. You might have one of the ECUs that was good or was taken care of, and you guys might be able to actually access some of those things. After that, you guys can just go ahead and disconnect Beamer Code, and uh, you're all set. All of your codes are saved into Beamer Code and in your car. This is really just such a cool feature that we have as BMW drivers. And like I said, you guys, you know, I've coded so many things in my F30, so many things. And I've made so many videos with coding in my F30. I've never had a single issue. But I think a lot of that comes down to using the correct adapter and following what Beamer Code suggests you do and do not do. So I just wanted to show you guys a few things. If we go through the toggle here, there's my mile per hour. So you can see I actually have the mile per hour, digital mile per hour on my instrument cluster for when I'm driving. And so if you guys come in here, you can actually see all of the features that I've added. I have the acoustic SIG unlock lock, flash lock unlock. You can change all that stuff right here in the iDrive system now that I coded it in. If you do any coding into the actual instrument cluster, you are gonna have to reset set your date and time in settings. You just go to time and date, go ahead and pick your time zone, put in the time and it does the rest for you. So yeah, other than that, you guys, it's uh, pretty simple. It's, it's really easy coding your car with Beamer Code. I absolutely love it. It's a feature that I don't think enough people take advantage of. So I just wanted to make a quick video on it. And then also here is the start stop that ejects the key. I just hold it and it popped it out. So now you can just take it out rather than having to push it back in to take it back out. Also important to note, when you guys are done coding, you can remove this. You do not need to leave it in. Some people were asking me if you actually had to leave this in for the codes to remain in the ECU. You don't need to do that. You just take it out, ECU is programmed, you're good to go. All right, you guys, so that should pretty much cover everything when it comes to coding the E90 with Beamer Code using the VPeak adapter. Like I said before, such a cool feature. I highly suggest you guys check it out and see what your car has available in terms of features to code. And just remember, make sure you get the VPeak adapter. The link is down below. There's also a 15% discount code for you to get 15% off when you buy the VPeak adapter with that link. I've tried a lot of different adapters. This is by far the best one made. And I highly suggest you use this when you're coding with Beamer Code. They also have this one on their website listed as the supported Bluetooth adapter. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you're new here. Comment down below. Hit that bell notification just like that. This video is over, and I'm out. Peace.